Hey there, good morning. Happy Tuesday. Welcome to Breakfast with Bridget. It is 7.30 a.m. on the dot on this January 16th, 2024. Thank you for being with us. And we want to get straight over to the weather this morning because it has been what we call a fog alert type of morning and also shaping up to be an inconvenient weather day. Meteorologist Candace mm-hmm. Campos has been holding down the fort with this and, and Trooper <laughs> Steve was out on the road showing us what it's really like out there too. Yeah, I mean, right now we have a warm front that basically lifted north. You saw some scattered showers yesterday, Bridget, probably. Um, And all of that is kind of just sitting over central Florida. So it's real soupy. It's humid. It's foggy. It's warm. And then we'll have a few scattered showers, maybe an isolated strong thunderstorm at times later on today along our next cold front that is going to really sweep flip our temperatures upside down. So temperatures right now this morning, we're already in the 70s. Early tomorrow morning, we're talking 30s with a wind. So wind chill values are actually going to be reported potentially tomorrow. So that's a a big story for us here in Central Florida. We get cold. We just don't get the wind chill. Forecast, yeah. I I mean, I'm I'm considering the heavier the heavier coats. We might look Mm -hmm. ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Compared to the rest of the country that are dealing with negative 30 something degree right, wind right. chill. But our blood is thin, but- Candace. <laughs> It is all relative, right, Bridget? All right, so let's talk about the weather forecast. Today, we are designating it an inconvenient weather day. And a lot of people are like, what the heck does that mean? We have weather alert day, which is kind of the worst of the weather, strong, severe storms. Today, it's kind of the notch below weather alert day. It's weather that is going to be impacting you and at times a bit on the inconvenient way, right? So the inconvenient kind of portion comes in three folds. So it's not just rain. It's not just fog. It's not just freezing temperatures tonight. It's all three. So again, we are watching a uh, advisory still that is in place until 10 o'clock this morning for a dense fog advisory for all of Central Florida. Then we have scattered rain. When it comes to the severe weather threat, marginal, basically a level one out of five, has the potential of a few strong storms possibly reaching that severe weather criteria. So we, of course, will be watching that. And then if that's not enough to inconvenience you, we've got freeze and frost potential in the forecast for pretty much half of our viewing area. Basically, Orlando northward could be seeing a version of frost or even freeze. We do have freeze warnings already in place with a wind chill factor that could be dropping us into the 20s, Bridget. So again, rainy today, very cold Wednesday, but the cold weather is not going to last long. We'll be warming up pretty quick. Let's look here at the clouds and rain forecast. We had our fair share of rain that our modeling is now picking up, um, although the modeling is picking it up happening now when it already happened. But I just wanted to show you that we do have that warm front that's still sitting just to our north across our northern counties. But then here comes our next line of rain approaching Marion County by about 1 o'clock into the I-4 corridor by about 3, 4, 5 o'clock, and then exiting Central Florida as early as about 6, 7 o'clock this evening. So we'll basically go from lunchtime to sundown with a whole lot of cold air rushing in behind it. The skies are going to be blasting through, clearing out our skies, and that is why temperatures are going to be dropping as fast as they are. So again, that dense fog advisory still in effect for a portion of Central Florida. So this is kind of the wider setup. There's that warm front bringing scattered showers from Marion, Flagler, and northward. That trailing cold front in the Gulf of Mexico will be approaching. Mind you, up to the north, you see the whites and the pinks. (laughs) That's also Mm. snow and sleet. It is a mess. Um, New York has had a, a snow drought for quite some time. It looks like that is going to be ending today as well. All tied to that same system that brought us the rain yesterday and we'll be bringing the rain and the cold air tomorrow. So look at your forecast lows for tonight. Mind you, we are starting off warm. We're in the mid 60s, nearing 70 already tomorrow. Ocala, you could be near that freezing point for tomorrow morning. Same for Palm Coast and the villages dipping into the 30s potentially there in Sanford. Um, But we are also talking about the potential of seeing, hold on, let me show you the wind chill. Hold on, let me move this. Uh This is the graphic I wanted to show you, the wind chill. There you go. 
Wind chill basically is cold air that's in place, and then you got that breeze. It's like the heat index, but for cold weather. So stopping the clock here, it could be feeling like 23 degrees for you guys in Flagler County tomorrow morning, feeling like 25, 26, even about 30 degrees mm. in Sanford. So it is going to be feeling very, I mean, look at New Smyrna Beach. It could be feeling like below freezing temperatures there. Down That's what we say the hawk is out. Have you ever heard that? Yeah, <laughs> seriously. So uh, even not even talking about the winds, we already do have freeze uh, warnings in place for Marion County, but just look up to the north. It's all purple. We're talking hard freeze warnings. So real nice. dangerous driving conditions. So if you need to drive um, up into the south today through Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi. If your travels take you there, just do be aware it is going to be a very rough morning tomorrow, already dealing with the last sleet already. So as we take you here throughout the next seven days, follow along here. We're in the 70s today. Good chance of rain. Then we'll drop those temperatures again, frosty to start Wednesday, but that's not going to last long. We'll be cold for your Wednesday afternoon, and then we'll be bouncing right back to near normal into the 70s, Thursday, Friday, and then Friday comes a dry cold front, not really producing a lot of rain along in our long range models. But then Saturday, Sunday, we could be staying in the 50s both days with overnight lows in the 30s and 40s once again. So this is the time if you have your fireplace, clean out the soot from the last couple of days, get ready for a big old blast of cold air. Could see This could be kind of the coldest snap that we've seen so far this not only this season, but within the last year for sure. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, we talked yeah. about how this weather is affecting so many things like travel. And, you know, yes. as Castro was out at the airport this morning showing all those cancellations and mm -hmm. delays that have trickled down from all of these types of systems that are moving across right now. Yeah, a lot of people coming down here to try to escape the cold, but jokes on them, they have to go back home. <laughs> so there's a lot of people trying to head back home. And, um, and also I had a neighbor who had to travel i think she was in chicago and she got she got stuck up there for like three days she finally got oh. home over the weekend so it's just miserable when you just it want to is. come home and mm -hmm. you just want to be in your nice warm bed in your nice warm florida <laughs> even though florida might not be super warm tomorrow right. it's so certainly warmer than the rest of the country we'll take it we'll take it mm -hmm. all right thank you candace i'll get my fleece out i need to start digging i get my couple fleet yeah new six the kids fleece vest and all those things yeah I mean, the, if the kids, it's funny, I just posted a photo. Let me show you. I just posted a photo of my daughter from back in the day. She's, she was teeny tiny when we were in the snow. But here we go. I say, wait, what? Oh, yep. Wednesday good. morning, right? <laughs> I might or might not be considered pulling this jacket out for the other one mm -hmm. tomorrow. So. Oh, yeah. Yep. We'll Prepare get, them, we'll get them bundled up a little bit. Yeah, for sure. That'll be the big story tomorrow. All right. Thank you, Candace. You're welcome. So let's head out to the roads and see what's going on. Trooper Steve has been in Results 1 all morning. Actually, we did something new this morning where he was on the road during the morning show, and it, it really came in handy with all the visibilities that we talked about because of the fog. Good morning, Trooper Steve. Good morning, Bridget. Man, we are tested and proven here at <laughs> News 6 time and time again. Whether it's a new podcast or new piece of equipment, we tried something new. You're right this morning, and I got the text at like 3 o'clock, and our executive producer, John Ambrone, uh, texted me and was like, hey, uh, the producer team's thinking we want to send you mobile this morning. And we I've like been wanting less. to do this forever. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> exactly. I was like, say less. I always, I know that it takes a lot of work. There's a uh, super multitasking, a big team in place to make sure that this happens, but it worked great. We were really mm -hmm. able to see uh, how the fog affected the highways, some of our residential areas, and to the point where it was coming down to where it wasn't as bad for us. And, I think a lot of people get the misconception uh, that news people like us want it to be bad out there mm -hmm. if we see the up. fog. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's like, no, if I go out there and we don't see it, that's a good day for me. Mm -hmm. uh, just like the, when I was trooping, if I could go out and not stop anybody, I'm okay with that. So uh, this morning, roadways were pretty good for the most part uh, when it came to our crashes and the commute. But uh, coming back from the Martin Luther King Jr. holiday, you know, a lot of people need to get back into that spin of things like school's mm -hmm. back. We're going to see those extra pedestrians and stuff out there as well. 
for sure. So how are the roads looking? Uh, roadways, uh, not horrible. If we want to jump right to it, uh, drive times on the Florida Turnpike uh, average, I guess we can say. But I w have been watching this crash along the Florida Turnpike. This happened right at the end of the show this morning. Southbound, right around the 250. Uh, this puts us close to 528, that orange Osceola County line. You can see a road ranger off to the right-hand side. There's a trooper out there as well. Uh, so just make sure you give him some space. Florida move over law does apply. That yellow that you're seeing on my screen, uh, not yellow snow, I promise. It mm. is uh, fog that is all over the place. So this is how I track it so we can see it uh, very clearly, and it is out there. So please be careful. Downtown Orlando, a little slow this morning, east and westbound. Eastbound delayed because what looks to be a crash here at 50 and a disabled vehicle that was over there at Fairbanks. Be careful. A lot of crashes are out there. Just because I we see them doesn't mean they're going to slow us down. This one could slow you down. John Young right there at Lynx. This is just south of our actual station outside the Lynx headquarters facility. Uh, delays right out there in the intersection. OPD working this and should have it clear within the next few. And then a little further south there, Hiawassee and Martel Court at Cantrell Drive. This is a uh, Windermere Metro West area. So be careful northbound lane seeing some heavy delays. I-4 drive times, 33 minutes Kissimmee to downtown, 25 coming from Lake Mary. And then where Ezzy Castro has been reporting all morning long with those heavy, heavy delays. If you have to head to the airport, um, check your flight times. I can't give you those, but I can let you know 436 and 528 currently up to speed. So Bridget, just like we saw, it, just, it doesn't we see crashes whether it's sunny outside or mm -hmm. if it's uh, if it's foggy out there. So right now, for the most part, we are doing pretty good. And as long as people are paying attention, I, I recently got this new reflector thing for my dog. Mm -hmm. And I know this sounds crazy, but I think it would work really good. DOT hands them out. I'm going to try to get some on uh, so I can show. But it's like a, you know, when you break a glow stick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah this is this has got a little battery in it and it just it just you click it and it stays a steady blue light on and i put it on our collar when we walk at night and it provides visibility i think that'd be really good for joggers kids and stuff like that uh, early oh, yeah. in the morning again it's not it's not high fashion and i'm big into the reflective stuff i'm gonna say this and some people are gonna think it's funny i hate reflective vests mm -hmm. i think they look ridiculous mm -hmm. but you could see them from a mile away there are options out there. This is a little thin one I bought my first self. Amazon, six bucks. And what? You could wrap it up, tuck it away after you're done walking around. So at the end of the day, we just want to be visible out there of course, uh, whenever yeah. we have this weather. Because that is the difference of maybe the seconds needed to steer out of the way and avoid, you know, hitting or hurting someone. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. You just need that extra moment to say, oh, wait, what's that up ahead? Let me slow down. Let me be cautious. And as pedestrians, you know, we got to we can't just rely on the driver seeing us. We got to take some extra steps, too. So are you going to be out at 830 or what do you have planned for today? Um, Today, uh, every second of my morning is calculated. Uh, today's stream is 830. ClickOrlando.com. I'm going to go out to the rest areas, talk about uh, safe parking out there for truckers, show where mm -hmm. they should be parking, where they shouldn't. Uh, I got a lot of kickback the other day when I uh, talked about truck drivers not parking on the side of the road. They weren't very mm -hmm. happy with me saying that. Um, but I, I can understand the, the good and the bad. So we're going to do that. And then I have to be right back here for some Super Bowl stuff that we're doing here at News 6. So that's going to be fun. All right. Well, we'll see you soon. Thanks, Trooper Steve. Bye, Bridget. Bye. All right, so we'll take a quick break. We'll be right back with more about Walk a Mile in Her Shoes, one of the great annual events with Harbor House of Central Florida. Good morning and welcome back. And we have a special guest this morning from Harbor House of Central Florida, CEO Michelle Sprezel. It is so good to see you this morning. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. It's so great to see you as well. You're gearing up for the 11th annual Walk a Mile in Her Shoes. I remember the very first one. It's hard to believe it's been 11 years, but this is one of the big events for Harbor House. It is, and it's actually one of our really fun events. There's a lot less pressure on the team because this is really about raising awareness and getting the community involved and really reaching out to people who want to make a difference because they know someone who's been impacted by domestic violence 
Um, it's kind of our march downtown and it's mm -hmm. done in a very different way by asking people to wear, I'm gonna say fun shoes. I'm not gonna necessarily say high heels, but, but fun shoes. And you have so many uh, recognizable leaders uh, from the community who get involved in this and actually, you know, put the shoes on too and, and join in on um, the fun. We do. We have such a wonderful support with the state attorney's office, Mayor Demings, Mayor Dyer, of course, Sheriff Nina and the chief of police. And so um, law enforcement comes out in a very big way and they come out in order to really <laughs> be there in solidarity with a lot of the different survivors. You can see some of them right there. Uh, Department of Corrections, they come out. Um, and it's really different people who interact with survivors in all the different systems we have in place in order to help mm -hmm. survivors navigate through a domestic violence situation. And what I what you can see in all the different B-roll and all the different pictures is that, you know, people are smiling. This is a really mm -hmm. serious topic, but people take it to the next level by making it fun. Um, and we always have Sammy out there walking with Mayor Dyer as well, which is fantastic. Um, but it's a really great awareness raiser for people to take a stand um, with each other when it comes to domestic violence. And it's something that it, I always say it's hidden in plain sight. But when we look at the numbers of how many people are calling Harbor House, and that's just, you know, one organization. But this is, you know, dozens of, of thousands of people calling every year. So you, I mean, it's like, it's like yes. the numbers are going up. The numbers are going up. And when I, I know that a lot of times when we look at that, we want to see that as a possible negative, but for me, it's a positive because mm -hmm. so many people who are experiencing domestic violence, they're too scared to reach out or they're, they're shameful or feel ashamed of the relationship that they're in. And so when we have someone who's reaching out for help and calling the hotline, we know that that's the number one first step in order for them to get free of a domestic violence situation and be able to get on the other side of domestic violence. And Harbor House, we have so much more than just our emergency shelter. And when someone calls that hotline, they can learn more about, you know, filing an injunction, getting in contact with one of our attorneys right then and there in order for them to get information and advice and legal advice on filing an injunction. They could put it, be put in contact with a counselor, a peer counselor, the advocacy starts right away when someone calls the domestic violence hotline. And, and we call them survivors, not victims. And that is word for word what it is because you've got a 99% survival rate of the people you help making it out safely. There is life on the other side of domestic violence. And I know that because I'm a survivor. And so that's the big thing is we know when someone reaches out to a domestic violence center, that the likelihood of them surviving that relationship is 99%. And that is well, what we, should, we really want people to know that we're here to help and that you're, we, our advocates are there to give different types of resources because domestic violence absolutely 100% kills people. And so if you're able to reach out to someone for help and support, we want to make sure that we give you all the different tools in order to get to that place where you can be safe with your family. And you know, also, the awareness about who Harbor House is for is so important because you're for everyone, regardless of orientation, gender, all ages, even pets being involved in this. You try to take care of everyone. Absolutely. Our, um, we have an on-site kennel, and that's available for individuals who are seeking shelter in our domestic violence, but that program goes beyond the walls of the shelter. So if someone is living in the community and they're working with us and they need support for veterinarian care, we have that available because oftentimes abusers use animals as the first victims within the family, and we want survivors to know that we can help them there. Um, on site, we have our youth program. We have a, a certified child care program, but we also do a lot of prevention programming and intervention programming in the community at local high schools. We do it within the court system. Um, so those are different ways that we get engaged and get involved with people. But you're right, it's really for everybody because domestic violence doesn't see color, it doesn't see sexual orientation, it doesn't even see the monetary level that someone might be at. It impacts everybody. And so we have all different types of programs that are available to meet people and help them with where they are on their journey. 
and help them get to a different destination when it comes in their life. That's beautiful. And so Thursday, February 8th is Walk a Mile in Her Shoes. So is there still time to register? What would you like to encourage people to do to get involved with that? So people can always look up Walk a Mile in Her Shoes Orlando, and then the website for registration is going to come up. It's $25 to register, and that really pays for us just putting on the event um, and an extra $10 if you want a T-shirt. And um, really, anybody can still register. You can register all the way up until the day of the event. We have the walk kicking off at 6 o'clock. As you mentioned, we have the different um, individuals from the community that are going to say some words. And then we actually will start walking just a little bit after 6 o'clock. We walk down um, Orange Avenue from the City Hall, um, um, from probably the courthouse to the City Hall. And it's a little bit less than a mile. Um, there's a lot of people who are out. We close down the lane to make sure that everybody's safe when they're walking. We have amazing law enforcement support as we're doing it as well. Um, so again, it is a very, very fun event. Um, it's very lighthearted, but it's about a very serious topic. And one thing we always encourage people to do is walk for someone who mm -hmm. you know might need help or walk for someone in honor of or walk mm -hmm. for someone in memory of and so that's mm -hmm. the important part is to also really honor the different people who have been impacted by domestic violence and and also we really encourage men to do this event because it is about men holding other men accountable because still the majority of domestic violence is perpetrated against women and so this is one where we really encourage men to come out and take a stand about domestic violence and say enough is enough and that we need to hold each other accountable and this is not how you treat another person yeah i saw that sign they were holding that said real men walk the walk and mm -hmm. that's what this is so Michelle, thank you so much for joining us this morning, and we're wishing you a successful walk a mile in her shoes coming up on February 8th. We'll see you soon. Thank you so much. It was wonderful seeing you this morning. Thank you. And so with that, we want to probably get in a couple of stories. Do we have time, Kathleen? All right, let's go into Iowa. Quick recap on that. Mark Lehman has more on the results of President, uh, former President Trump uh, took home the record setting win as, as the polls had been predicting from last night's Iowa caucuses. And here's Mark with more. It was a commanding win as former President Trump picked up more than half the votes in last night's Iowa caucus. We want to thank the great people of Iowa. Thank you. We love you all. I really think this is time now for everybody, our country, to come together. We want to come together. Trump gaining significant ground with a number of groups that he lost in Iowa in 2016. He also gave rare thanks to his Republican opponents. There are very smart, very smart people, very capable people. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis finished in a distant second place, but vowing to stay in the race as the leading alternative to the front runner. In spite of all of that that they threw at us, everyone against us, we've got our ticket punched out of Iowa. Former UN Ambassador Nikki Haley taking home a third place finish, but hoping to turn things around starting next week. I love you, Iowa, but we're on to New Hampshire. And of course, you can always read up more on the politics on clickorlando.com. I want to preview Axiom 3 mission set for liftoff from Kennedy Space Center tomorrow night at 5.11 p.m. The first crew launch of the year from our Space Coast is almost here. The four-person all-European crew will launch from a Falcon 9 rocket for a two-week mission to the ISS. And when it happens, you'll see it live on News 6, News 6 Plus streaming app and, of course, clickorlando.com. And before we go, something very cool in the skies over Orlando last night, actually Sunday night, this is an amazing drone show that happened at the Orange County Convention Center, and it's a part of the 41st Annual Veterinary Expo, and uh, it's called VMX, so all the veterinarians and all their crew associated with that field are in town for this big conference, which runs through tomorrow, but you can see the drone show was Delighted crowds there, very different than fireworks, which is what we're mostly used to here in Orlando. But more and more, these drone shows are becoming a great alternative to the traditional fireworks. And as you can see, they had different animals 
uh, dogs, flowers, birds, even dog food being poured into a bowl. So just a really cute display out there for the veterinary conference. And that's going to do it for us this morning on Breakfast with Bridget. We'll be right back here tomorrow morning at 730. Dig up that heavy coat and we'll see you tomorrow morning.